Hello, this video is on the derivation of the michaelis menten equation. It took me a while to figure out, so I thought I'd explain it so other people don't have to spend as long a time figuring it out as I did. So, in this video I'd like to explain how we get to it, what each term has within it, what other terms make up each term, if that makes sense. And in a subsequent video I'd like to explain what each term means in a clinical environment, what each term implies, and how to use it in your train of thought. So to start off with, here's the michaelis menten equation. The velocity starting out of an equation, I mean of a reaction, is equal to the maximum velocity that's possible to obtain times the substrate concentration over Km, the michaelis menten constant, plus uh, substrate concentration. To start with, let's do a quick review of reaction rate. If I have this reaction, A plus B goes to form P, and I want to find how fast P is being formed, then I'm going to be looking for the reaction rate equation. And another way to say how um, the velocity of P formation is dP over dt. So velocity equals dP over dt. If you haven't had calculus yet, think of this D right here as a delta. The change in the concentration of P over the change in time is equal to a rate constant, K, times the concentration of A, times the concentration of B. Now this crazy looking thing down here is trying to show that this rate constant, K, has within it this term right here, delta G double cross. And this term is signifies the amount of uh, activation energy that's needed for this reaction to start. So within the K term is the activation energy. All right, continuing on, this is an enzyme substra a substrate reaction. We have on this side starting enzyme plus the substrate goes to form an enzyme substrate complex. From here it has two choices. The one it most commonly takes is goes back and regresses back into enzyme and substrate. But on rare occasion, this ES can go forwards and form the product and then reform the enzyme. Each one of these steps has a react or a rate constant going from E plus S to ES has K1, from ES to E plus S has K minus 1, and from ES to P plus E has K2. These numbers are arbitrary, they're just mainly to sh differentiate between which rate constant. So for the velocity of this reaction, we're trying to find out how fast this product is being formed, because this is what we care about, is the end product. So we're trying to find dP over dt. So let's look at this reaction. From the precursor, ES, we know we have this reaction constant. So K2 times the concentration of ES will give us the rate of P formation. Now, Michaelis Menten wanted to add some more details into this so that it could be more looked at more objectively and have more factors to look at. So they thought, well, what changes this concentration? What changes the concentration of ES? Because whatever changes the concentration of ES is going to lead to a change in the concentration of P because of this formula right here. Now remember this formula right now for later. V ought equals K2 times ES. All right. So we're looking at ES. And we want to find the change in ES over change in time. Because if we find out the change in ES over change in time, we can find out the change in product over change in time. So when we look at that, we're going to look at all the reactions that bring things to or away from uh, the ES. So right here, let's start with this. E plus S goes to form ES. So that's creating ES. So that's going to be a positive sign, and it has reaction rate constant K1. So it's K1 times the precursors E and S concentration. Now going away from ES, we have this reaction and we have this reaction. So if we subtract, uh, going this way first, if we subtract K minus 1, and we have ES as the precursor now because it's going this direction. ES is the precursor. So minus K to the negative 1 times ES. And then if we have on this side, going this direction, we have this rate constant times the concentration of ES because it's a precursor. Minus K2 times ES. That should give us the change in ES concentration over the change in time. All right. So we are going to assume that K minus 1 is much, much greater than K2 for this equation. And this works in a lot of different uh, uh, enzyme reactions. It's very classical, classic of enzyme reactions. 
So when we start out, we have E plus S going to ES, and really, really a lot of the time it's going to go just straight back. So that's what that's saying. K1 is much greater than K2. This happens a whole lot more than this happens. So if we do that, then the change in the concentration of ES over the change in time is going to be approximately zero. Now this is an assumption in real life it's not zero, but this is an assumption that we do in order to calculate it easily. And we say it's almost zero because if things are going E plus S and then going to ES and then going back and then going back and then going back and then going back, ES concentration isn't really changing. So that's what this is saying. The concentration in ES is not going to change over time. Now if we look at, gra at a graph of an actual real life sort of example, um, I got this from the source down here and it, they had this orange box on here that I didn't take the time to take off. So this isn't important for me. But if we look at this, this right here, this level or this side, uh, y-axis represents the concentration and the x-axis represents time. If we start at time of zero, we look at this enzyme right here and it's at its highest level. That's because none of the enzyme has met with any of this substrate, which is also at its highest level because none of it has been broken down. Um, the ES, the enzyme substrate complex, hasn't been formed yet, and product hasn't been formed yet, so they're both at zero. And now as we go along in time, this enzyme level is going to slowly fall because it's meeting with its substrate and forming this enzyme substrate complex. Also at the same time, the substrate's going to fall because it's being involved in the enzyme substrate complex, and the product is going to rise because um, very slowly the ES complex is going to go and make enzyme and product. So this is going up slowly. Now the part that we look at when we're doing Michaelis-Menten equation is this region right here. This region right here on the x-axis. And the reason we look at that is because look at the concentration of ES. It's pretty constant. The change over time in ES is very, very minimal. So we approximate it to zero. Okay, so let's set DES over DT to zero. If we do that, we get zero equals this mess up here. And now let's rearrange it real quick and get this. And now remember how we're trying to find out about the concentration of ES over uh, the change in concentration of ES over time because that will tell us the change in concentration of P over time. So let's solve this for the concentration of ES. And here it is solved for the concentration of ES. Now these three numbers right here are kind of cumbersome. So what Nicholas and Menton did is they came up with a constant that could replace these three. So it's the michaelis menten constant, and it's defined as Km equals K to the minus 1 plus K2 over K1. Now if you look at this equation, it's inversed. So when we put Km substituted in for this, it's going to be on bottom, and it's going to look like this. Concentration of ES equals concentration of E times concentration of S over Km. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of this term E so we can put in some other terms that are more useful to us. The way we're going to do that is we're going to look make another make a new equation. So here's our new equation: the enzyme total equals the enzyme free amount of free enzyme plus the enzyme substrate complex concentration, which makes sense because if we put in you know 10 moles of an enzyme and one of it is free, not attached to a substrate, and nine of the mol the moles are attached to substrate. If we add the 9 moles of enzyme substrate complex plus the 1 mole of free, we get our original 10. So, if we rearrange this to solve for E so we can plug it into this E right here, we get E equals ET minus ES. And now let's put that into that equation on top, replacing this E. And we get ET, not the alien, it's the enzyme total, minus ES times S over the michaelis menten constant. Now we substituted something in but we didn't get we we now do not have ES solved for ES is in both sides of the equation so let's do some fancy math and we'll get ES equals ET times S over KM plus S now let's go back to the beginning remember that formula I told you remember this is where it comes into play this is just a rep or a repetition of the previous slide and right here we have 
remember that the velocity of the formation of the product equals k2 times es because es is a precursor k2 is a rate constant and that's how fast it's forming p well we have es right here solved for let's put this es into here let's put this value into here and see what we get this is what we get the velocity at a certain point in time of the formation of the product is equal to k2 times et times s over km plus s now we have just one more step till we get to the michaelis menten equation and that is to find the maximum uh, velocity that's possible to obtain and the way we're going to do that is by thinking well what makes a, a reaction go faster adding more substrate if we max out the amount of substrate have a substrate level of infinity that's the fastest possible that reactions can go so if you've had calculus this is an easier concept to understand but let's think of these two s's right here substrate levels as infinity and i'll illustrate that right there now we have something on top times infinity and something on bottom plus infinity now think if you were let's say this was a hundred million think if you were a hundred millionaire that'd be pretty nice and let's say this value right here is two if you multiplied your hundred million dollars by two do you think you would notice that probably because that's a lot of money that you just gained but down here let's say this km is two if i add two to a hundred million dollars do you think you're really going to notice it now if this was higher numbers let's say a billion it's going to be two billion versus a billion and two as you can see as this number gets higher this number becomes less and less important and this number stays just as important so we're going to since this is so high we're going to get rid of km because it's no longer important all right now i have this i have a huge number over a huge number but remember it's s over s so anything over itself is divisible by itself and it equals one so i'm going to cross those off and put a one and i get the maximum velocity that's possible to obtain is k2 times et now wait if i look up here I notice k2 times et is already in this equation. What if I substituted k2 plus et for v max in this equation? So what if I took out this and instead replaced it with v max? And that's how the formula is calculated. Now there's one more important element that we have to go over real quick, and that is a special relationship between km and s. All right. So I'm just going to make this easy and we're going to start out by saying I want a velocity that's half of the maximum velocity so I'm gonna set V to one half V max and I want to find out what substrate level is necessary to obtain this speed so what value of s do I need to get half of the maximum speed well when I put V for or when I put one half V max for V I get this equation now let's simplify that a little bit I'm gonna I'm going to cancel out V max on both sides, divide V max on both sides, and I'll get one half equals S over KM plus S. I'm going to cross multiply. I'll get 2S equals KM plus S, subtract the concentration of S on both sides, and I'll get the concentration of S is equal to KM. And what this is telling us is when the concentration of S is equal to KM, I have the velocity equal to half of the maximum velocity so whenever s is equal to km the reaction is going at half of its maximum velocity and also you can go vice versa on that if a reaction is going half the speed of its maximum velocity then i know that the km is equal to the s or the s is equal to the km so there are the three equations that are important for michaelis uh, uh equations and calculations and ideas and I hope now you can understand how each term is derived and what is contained within each one of these terms.